Welcome. My name is Jennifer Macklin. I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner in Chattanooga, Tennessee at ChattanoogaAyurveda.com. Um, today, I have a special guest, uh, Renuka Kalkarni, who is a Vaidya from India and a specialist in uh, women's and, and men's infertility. So today we're going to talk about uh, just that, infertility, how it is treated in India, and, and how, uh, what, what can be done in the United States uh, with what is available here for Ayurvedic practitioners. Um, so uh, we will also discuss um, how the practice of Ayurveda in India differs from the practice in the United States currently. We'll talk a little bit about the Ayurvedic body types and their tendencies towards fertilization and uh, the, the limitations of this understanding. Um, so we'll get into uh, what the causes of infertility according to Ayurveda. And we'll also talk about successful treatment and what that looks like. And finally, we will talk about how to maintain good reproductive health. And there's really a lot of, of great uh, substance that, that Ayurveda can provide for uh, maintaining reproductive health. So I would like to introduce uh, my guest, uh, Vaidya Renuka Kalkarni. Um, Renuka is an Ayurvedic infertility specialist. Um, she's located in Maha Maharashtra. Uh, I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Okay, um, and she's been um, a specialist in infertility for the past 29 years, um, so she has a lot of experience, and um, she also has been a guest lecturer um, and speaker um, in, in several uh, platforms, um, so it is, it is wonderful to have her here today. Um, Renuka, thank you. thank you for being here. Thank you. I also uh, am I'm, I'm also thankful to you to be, uh, give this wonder, uh, wonderful opportunity to, to share my experiences with all, all on this huge. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's it's great to um, to have you here. I think the the screen is frozen for a minute, but hopefully it will um, it will join back in. Um, so um, let's see. Okay. Um, so, uh, Vaidya, uh, I just want to explain a couple. In... Oh, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> let me um, let me tell our audience first what a Vaidya is, uh, because there are some people yeah. Yeah. that will be watching okay. this that are new yeah. to Ayurveda. Um, yes. So, uh, this term Vaidya refers to an Ayurvedic expert, essentially. It is somebody who has trained in the classical Ayurvedic texts and has uh, uh, developed a um, um, expertise in them and ability to practice using the uh, substances that, that come from the Ayurvedic texts. Um, so, a Vaidya, it's a, I'll put it in the um, in the chat so that everybody can see. It's V-A-I-D-Y-A. Yeah. In the United States, uh, we use this term um, because, uh, for one reason, because uh, Ayurveda is not licensed here in the U.S. Yes. So, you know, we don't want to confuse anybody by referring to um, the Vaidyas as a doctor. Um, yes. in, in, a, in the United States, they are not doctors. Uh, but mm -hmm. in India, however, and their training is equivalent to a medical school training. Yeah, they are using as a synonyms that Vaidya and doctor are safe. But when we are classic, uh, practicing as a classical Ayurveda, we like to pronounce ourselves as a Vaidya. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, Renuka, could you tell me um, how did you get into Ayurveda? And, and yeah. what, what brought you to the study of Ayurveda? There is a long story about it. When I was in 11th standard, I got fever and it was a high fever and it was, it remained for eight months. And uh, everything, every investigation was done from brain to the tips of the toes, but no problem, no problem at all. And everyone was saying that there is no problem. And this is PUO. The diagnosis was PUO, that was pyrexia of unknown origin. And uh, no one knows how what to do. My parents were very anxious because uh, they cannot find the answer. 
my grandma was there and she was practicing ayurveda and as a uh, beloved uh, daughter in law daughter not daughter in law uh, as a beloved uh, child granddaughter i used to do some work with her and she told me oh i i will give you some medicine decoction but it is very very bitter and you have to drink it and then on, then and then only we can try this so i said uh, there was no option for me so i said yes we can try and it was at kirata tikta kadha decoction and i drank it it was very bitter and after that when i eat i was eating sugar it was um, i was thinking that it is bitter only but after one week only i got uh, relieved from the fever and which was up to 8 months which was not at all coming down fever but she uh, did, due to this ayurvedic treatment it came down and mm. after that that was cured completely so i thought i i had taken admission to electronics i was a bright student and i was uh, uh, having ele- uh, admission in electronics but i feel from the bottom of heart, my heart that i should work in for ayurveda more and more so this is my story because i was just uh, cannot live without uh, these medicines i was with fever and uh, electronics is okay but i should more and more study about the ayurveda so i took admission inst- here uh, mbbs that is allopathic practice is more uh, uh, that at that time that was more renowned mm-hmm. but i uh, instead of taking admission there i uh, preferred to took the admission to ayurveda i studied ayurveda thoroughly and then got the results and i enjoy my practice this yeah. is my passion yes yeah, that's wonderful um it's uh, so many people i think have been touched by ayurveda in some way and and then their interest really develops and yeah. and that I feel was... that there is some uh, something which i should study and there are some uh, medicines that are hidden inside the granthas and that i should know more and more yeah yeah i yeah. it's i had the same experience i was helped with ayurvedic treatment and oh. i i really found that uh, what uh, was given to me was so unusual that i would not have had the same treatment in an, in from any any place else so yes. it really piqued my interest in ayurveda yeah that was so yeah. yes so tell me how many um over the past 29 years how many yeah. uh women do you think have you treated and 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 what can you share with us about about infertility yeah uh well, more than uh, i can say 15000 patients i have treated successfully and uh, 5000 couples are gifted by a baby boy or baby girl infertile couples which are having the problems like uh, uh, pcod low amh thyroid obesity repeated iui ivf failure cases when these patients jennifer revisit to our clinic they feel lost they feel guilty and uh, they feel so many of the patients were suggested by you should oh you, you will you will not conceive by your own egg you should take donor egg and they feel depressed oh if if, if i want to get uh, pregnant by the donor egg i will why should i uh, i i will prefer to adopt the child why should i uh, go for all these procedures and after failing failure of these cases when they got results it is very uh, beautiful for them and i have invented my own technique of uttar basti which we will uh, in a further discussion we will speak about it more but uh, that uh, method is more effective equally effective and less painful and i have performed more than 60000 uttar basti we and touch wood there is no complication up, up till now but it is it should be done with a expertise with expert hands uh, the hands should be more and more expert mm-hmm. yes yeah, so so i'm in, really interested in in hearing more about this utterbasti um in yes. in my studies i've i've heard of it but but don't know too much about it it, it is a treatment that's not done in the united states um, yeah. so So I, I, that is one thing I wanted to touch upon is is yes. 
how yeah. the practice of Ayurveda in the United States is, is different than, than what is being practiced in India. Um, yeah. Part of that has to do with the, with the educational system here. Yeah. Um, so uh, there is um, in, in India, uh, uh, um, study of Ayurveda is a five and a half year minimum. Yes. Yes. Uh, study uh, for the BAMS degree, and that is yes. the Bachelor of Ayurvedic Medicine and Surgery. Yes. Uh, yes. So that is the minimum for practice. Um, in India, uh, I believe it is the Central Council for Indian Medicine that yes. is a regulatory yes. body. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we are also having different ministry, uh, Ayush ministry, A Y U S H, that is Ayurved, uh, Yoga, Yunani, Siddha, and Homeopathy. Yes, correct. Just now our uh, government uh, decided to have this Ayush. Yes, this is Ayush. And this Ayush ministry is also governing just now uh, for these uh, Vaidyas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the education is very different. In, in the United yeah. States, um, yeah. Ayurveda is, is quite watered down and um, is uh, sort of falling into an, a new age category where yeah. treat, treatment of disease is, is not really uh, tackled with Ayurveda in the United States. That is yeah. beginning to change a little bit. Um, yes. I think there are, some, there are some qualified teachers here that have been trained in India um, oh. that, are, that are teaching students how to uh, manage disease with Ayurvedic medicine. Um, oh. However, the majority of the schooling and the educational system is still based in a a simple diet and lifestyle approach. Yes, but yes. Uh, one thing, in one, one of my purposes and, and reasons for having you here, Rudika, is because I want to share with people that, that there's so much more to Ayurveda that mm -hmm. we don't, you know, we don't under, we don't have that understanding here in the U.S. Um, the media. You are doing a very beautiful job for Ayurveda. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. It's, you know, I see the potential and I, I, yes. there's, there's so much collaboration that could happen. Um, yes. There's there's so much help that people could receive from it. Yes. Um, so uh, just a, a couple of the misconceptions about Ayurveda here in the United States is, um, you know, people are thinking that it's vegetarian, uh, that yeah. you have to be a vegetarian. That's not true. You can be a no, meat no. eater. Meat yes. is actually used for yes. some treatments. Yes. Uh, people think also that it's related to spirituality. Um, uh -huh. where, you know, in, in reality, you can be uh, in, of, of any denomination, um, you can be uh, of any religious affiliation and benefit from Ayurveda. You, you don't have to be, um, you know, a certain, uh, um, you know, following certain beliefs or a certain spirituality. Um, and, and then also, uh, you know, people think that it's spa medicine here, that it, you know, <laughs> some of these treatments have been taken into the spa yeah. industry, but it's, yeah. it's not, it's, it's, it's not really like that. a medical system. Yes. In India, Jennifer, in, in India also, there are some misconceptions about Ayurveda. Many people think that there are no side effects about the Ayurvedic medicines, but when they are not used in a proper way, Although they are herbal medicines, I will like to share one case with you. I mm. was having uh, about 25 years ago, there was a small child, eight years old, and she got menses in the early age. And nowadays you must have noticed that um, menses are, menarche is, uh, the age of menarche is uh, be, uh, becoming earlier. Mm. And uh, when she visited with her mother, she was a very innocent child. And uh, before coming to Ayurveda, she went to allopath. And they gave OC pills. I was shocked at that time because three months OC pills she was given. And then her mother thought that it is uh, not good for her to give the OC pills. So are, she, are these pills, um, these are... OC um, pills, that is oral contraceptive pills oh, that will okay. regularize her... Uh, yeah, uh, so very, very thank you for, for correcting me for the abbreviations. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is oral contraceptives and that will regularize her uh, cycle. And uh, then she felt that, uh, oh, I should not give the hormonal treatment. So she asked that uh, doctor that, will you go, please give uh, uh, Ayurvedic medicines? She thought that, oh, I can give my uh, Ayurvedic medicines. And she pre uh, uh, prescribed her aloes compound and Kumari Aso. 
as a result the when the menses were about 21 days they started coming after 12 days and she actually her mother was crying because she cannot understand how to advise her to take the pad and how to manage all the things and uh, this is this was due to the aloes compound you must be knowing that due to kumari the menses started coming earlier and earlier so it is not and many people like to uh, read from different uh, stories and they like to uh, practice it on their own body like a guinea pig mm-hmm. so it is not good they should take uh, actual uh, advice of a vaidya they should know their constitution then their dosha condition and then they should even they want to use any uh, sesam seeds or any um, any type of uh, home remedies also they should take advice of a vaidya and then should, they should try at it try it at home yeah. uh, again there is a second misconception that ayurved will give delayed results many cases i have treated they are of infertility got result from 1 month to 6 months it is not like that they are delayed we can give instant results but we should know the actual samprapti dosha dusha sammurchana and then we can give the instant results also mm-hmm. but we should know exact what exactly her body is suffering from then we can give uh, instant results mm-hmm. then again third misconception is we cannot use ayurveda in uh, emergency cases it is not true due to this pandemic uh, both my husband dr mahesh and my varun dr varun or dr varun and he, both of them are working in covid patients and they found that in emergency treatments when oxygen level was actually dropping they were giving medicines and uh, they were getting uh, results oxygen levels were increased and when the patients are associated with ayurvedic treatment i will not claim that only with the help of ayurveda when both were, uh, treatments work hand in hand many patient got excellent results and post covid recovery is also good with the help of ayurveda yeah, because i sure. think jennifer this uh, virus is not derived for ayurvedic medicine so it is giving excellent results to Uh, ayurvedic treatments also hmm. so there are misconceptions yeah thank you for sharing those um you know i i hear the same things here in the us that there's yeah. no side effects that yes. that the results will be delayed um that yeah. emergencies cannot be handled with ayurveda but yeah you're right all of these are not true yeah so you know you brought up the the, the body types a little bit and the the doshas Um, yes. can, could you talk about uh, the body types and how and if if and how uh, they contribute to um, infertility? Yes, there are three body types, major. Ayurved thinks vata, pitta, and kapha. These are the three types of body constitutions. Uh, according to Ayurved Grantha, this constitution is decided. at the time of shukra shonita sanyoga that is yes vata pitta and kapha these are the three constitutions and this constitution is decided when shukra and shanu that is when uh, semen and follicle are getting becoming zygote at that time that may be uh, in a summer or in winter or in rainy season that time this decides the constitution of that Uh, person and after that constitution is decided after that uh, due to uh, dusham desham balam kalam analam prakrutim vayaha there different uh, types of uh, we cannot uh, after uh, the uh, child takes different kind of uh, diet different regimen is followed he uh, lives at different places some someone will live in america in california in uh, uh, someone live in coastal area someone will live in the desert area and that will decide the because it when it is in the desert area it will increase uh, always increase vata when it is nearer to the uh, sea, uh, coastal area it will increase kapha mm-hmm. so this will uh, dusham desham balam then uh, yes the child is kapha fertile age is pitta and then the old age is vata these are the conditions then 
also in the day time also the first uh, uh, yes there is a biological clock so we have to follow that biological clock so in ayurveda it is said that you should wake up early in the morning why because early in the morning there was vata is more prominent and it will help to eliminate all excrete all the mala that if you are having some constipation problem uh, excretion of this mala that uh, faces stools mm-hmm. it will help for passing the stools then after that there is uh, pitta comes pitta time at the t- time of 10 o'clock at that time you can t- eat your food that will be easily digested so uh, it is not like that only constitution is important for the fertility fertile age with the help of fertile she is having according to ayurveda fertile age of the woman starts at the age of 16 mm-hmm. and then slowly it uh, at the age of 50 it she stops her fertility so this is fertile age and it is more related to pitta this age is related to pitta so it is not so uh, we cannot uh, correlate this uh, constitution with the fertility it will not affect the fertility of the patient any constitution mm-hmm. oh but yeah if after 450 she want to conceive that she will be in a vata state and it will it will be difficult to get conceived mm-hmm. okay so the um so the conception is the peer, is the time when we we receive our constitution yes the constitution yes. and the type created. of conception yes mm-hmm. yes and then uh the you're saying the desha the yes uh, the environments that we're, we yes. are brought up in has a yes. huge impact on, on yes how our bodies develop is that correct yes yes perfect good yeah um is the um the constitution that we are born with does that lend any any anything to our chances for fertility uh, no but when we are facing the patients with low amh we will, i will like to share one thing that uh, many patients are due to infertility they are coming to us with low amh that is anti mullerian hormone anti mullerian hormone is the when she is taking birth from her mother's womb the actual for, uh, um, number of follicles are decided suppose she is having some number of follicles and after doing repeated ovulation monitoring and ovulation induction they took actually reproduce more and more fertile eggs and uh, take away from it and after that when the this low amh is there otherwise there are premature ovarian failure patients are also there these actual um, uh, mullerian uh, follicles are decreased in size and at that time the chances of fertility are very low so due to these hormones the fertility chances gets reduced but at this time as a, with the help of ayurveda we can focus on quality of the eggs quality of the seeds and these follicles and that will help us to conceive that patient mm-hmm. instead of focusing on quantity oh your numbers are very less they used to afraid the patient that your number are very less you should try it for ivf you should go for icsi that is intracytoplasmic injection or assisted um, um, reproductive health reproductive procedures and they are all costly but due to all these treatments only they got this uh, low amh problem mm-hmm. so are these these are the the shukrala group mm-hmm. of substances correct yes yes and so in these substances we have things like um, milk right yeah yeah milk and uh butter right uh no pardon me please uh butter um please i can i cannot understand your point oh okay so yeah. i'm i'm wondering um you know how how are how is it possible to to increase the quality of of the yeah. um after doing complete detoxification of the body we can increase because shukra you all know uh, is the last dhatu and when we start from rasa dhatu shukra dhatu obviously 
uh, it is having the good quality and after that we can give the results to the okay. patient okay so the cleansing needs to happen first yes detox yes yes detoxification okay. should be done in these patients um we know uh, another thing i wanted to ask you is in your experience um hmm. what are what are you seeing as as the underlying causes of infertility yes uh i would like to share some slides mm please go ahead while you're getting your slides ready um i'll share a oh, little yeah. bit with the audience about uh the detoxification process um so this is uh, yes. called panchakarma um in the united states uh, yes. often uh, panchakarma um is shown uh, is 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 given as a a very simple uh regimen of uh uh abhyanga or ayurvedic massage shirodhara and basti or ayurvedic um medical uh enema and uh, this is is uh common common throughout the US as panchakarma but panchakarma is actually so much more than than these three uh treatments um so so you don't mind the fact that sharing kare mantra so i hello you... uh, jennifer yes please uh this uh, disable uh, it is disabled ah, so oh. i cannot share my oh, screen oh okay okay i apologize okay let's see how i can fix oh, no, no problem <laughs> okay hmm. <laughs> Okay, should be okay for you. Can you try it again? Yeah, yeah, now it's okay. Great. Yes. Great. No, no, it's okay. Uh These are the causes. Huh. These according to Ayurveda, causes Ayurveda thinks on three levels. Uh, physical, psychological and karma, karmic. the physical level on the physical level we can do many things it is it will be a different story because it will be we will have to go in a deep but we have to uh, think about her uh, nadi mutra and there are many psychological factors also it is described in charaka sanhita sharirsthan and uh, manasobita pat here it is described that many psychological factors are also affecting the infertility uh they also say that they, when they are having the repeated iu or ivf failure they feel that they, it is due to stress so there are many patient who got conceived after only due to after shirodhara proper counseling and uh, listening yoga nidra only they got the results psychological factor is more important because it affects rasadhatu also parinaman of rasadhatu also uh you may know, must be knowing uh, you all of you must be knowing that if we are eating something and if we, if we uh, have some phone or some bad news we cannot eat further more food and it directly affects our agni and so the parinaman of the rasa is affected and this is the psychological factor which is affecting more and more then the karma karma many patients i saw that they are having some occupational problems some patients are having uh, one of patient the patient i met she was working on uh, she was doing her phd on uranium and uh, after exposing herself when she was pregnant she was having the hydatiform mole she developed it and after that she uh, she had uh, to abort it then when she visited our clinic i told her that you should get away from that uranium get pregnant continue the pregnancy and after that you can again go back to your work now her son is 29 years old so it is the karma her sometimes it is occupational some there was one uh, milk uh, he was uh, um, giving milk to a, each and every home but uh, he uh, 
closed his uh, milk uh, station and then he started giving the uh, beer bar he st started beer bar alcohol hmm. and uh, it is the karma and he was suffering from primary infertility and after doing many and many iu and ivf but he cannot get uh, conceived so i asked him are you going to change your karma he said no madam it is very uh, late now so i said no uh, i cannot uh, give you treatment because it is your karma and you are suffering from it so when you are going uh, giving some amrut in each and every home you are started giving toxins and wish and it is your karma some one patient i met uh, some 20 years ago and they were were feeling very guilty that couple was feeling very guilty because due to repeated iu and ivf uh, they were doing repeatedly m cradle mtp uh, medical termination of the pregnancy she was having a baby girl and for your 6 years old and after that she was doing always she was doing mtp and now it is the condition that she cannot conceive only and they were feeling guilty for that she belongs to a very rich family and his mother was after him that you should get married for the second marriage you should arrange for the second marriage because uh, we should need some um, follower uh, uh, some inherited property it, sh it should be carried for the further so they were insisting but by god's grace and ayurveda is great i treated that patient and they got a baby boy and the family was relieved sometimes ayurveda gives more intervention in that families and many times it's uh, the karma where uh, it uh, creates the problem mm -hmm. the in environment physical, that you're physical, in garbha sambhava samak go ahead yes. i'm sorry go yes. ahead please garbha sambhava samak no 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 problem uh, in physical there are many factors Uh, there is a shloka rutu kshetra ambu bija then here this shloka in sushruta acharya sharirstan he actually gives the classical example of a farmer what a farmer does it does if he want to sow a seed he first cleans all the debris from the soil remove all the debris from the soil cleans the soil that is prithvi that is earth mahabhut then pours water that is jala mahabhut जल वॉटर महाभूत वॉटर प्रोमोडियल एलिमेंट देन ही एक्चुअल प्रिपेर मड देन ही सिलेक्ट अ प्रॉपर गुड सीड बीज संस्कार बीज दट इज सीड एम्बेड इट इन द मड एंड अलाउज द सनलाइट टू फॉलो ऑन इट दट इज तेज प्रिमोडियल एलिमेंट देन धीस तेज इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टंट फॉर धीस कन्वर्जन सो due to this tej primordial element multiplication of the cells occurs vayu vibhajati so this vayu that is uh, air air primordial element it it is it gives the multiplication of the cells it causes multiplication of the place uh, of these cells in a huge form and after that akash ether element gives space for sprouting and this is the method exactly this method happens in the uh, when while formation of the fetus and when we consider about this all these things we have to consider uh, we have to consider about the different factors when i met uh, with the um, abroad patients more uh, consultations online they actually feel that no one is uh, wondering about their uh, constitution they don't want to speak a single word they just focus on the reports of the patient but ayurved science is more and more focused on the it is more personalized and the treatment is customized so we have to think about the different uh, parikshan of this patient we have to do the ashtavidha parikshan we have to uh, pulse reading we have to do the pulse reading actual this is actual more and more personalized treatment we think about her uh, mental state her phys physical condition her physiological condition what are the different previous treatments she had taken 
her body is is her body is bombarded with the help of hormones if she is having previous history of uh, previous illnesses any operations undergone any operations if there are any iud inserted like uh, yesterday we uh, discussed about the marina or is there any copper t inserted any uh, empty pills are taken or any i pills are taken only uh, i pills or uh, oral contraceptives are taken then all these things we should know and by considering all these things we have to do actual pv per vaginal test then stun a breast examination should be done then raja parikshan that her, how her menstrual flow is there yeah it is more and more personalized we are always just now we are more personalized we are having our own uh, mobile we are having our own account like that we are having our, our own menstrual flow also and it is it will decide is it a raja vitiated menstrual flow is vitiated or it is not so it should be examined properly we should ask the patient that is it having clots or is it blackish or it is having foul smelling are her menses are regular are irregular is how much the time you are having the menses bleeding is there so all these things gives us a clear picture of the case taking mm -hmm. So pariksha is the Sanskrit word for assessment or examination. Yes, yes, uh, so assessment. What uh, Vaidya Ranuka is is referring to are all the methods of assessment uh, that are done uh, in examining um, a, a woman who is is uh, you know experiencing infertility. So all all of these areas, the pulse, uh, the raja, or the the menstrual flow, and um, you know, all, all areas of assessment, the history, the menstrual history, surgical history, everything uh, is taken into consideration, which makes Ayurveda so, so personalized. You know, her, her diet, her lifestyle, her daily routine, these are all things that are also taken into consideration when considering, uh, when, when looking at, you know, what does this woman need um, to, to, uh, to increase her fertility? Yes. Please continue. We want to hear more. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought I was speaking a lot, so I saw. No, no, no. This is the good stuff. This is the meat. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to share one more slide, Please. which are the underlying causes of uh, infertility. Yeah, this is the, these are the major problems. Just now I am feeling that in the, these are the problems which causes infertility in women. It is the lifestyle disorders because no one wants to wake up early. The lifestyle is, and regime, regime is becoming more and more lethargic just now. Everyone is doing uh, brain work more. So calories are, uh, uh, burnt but they don't like to exercise more here in india they are not aware about the exercise and uh, no exercise so they get weight gain is there and uh, there are many problems then excessive use of hormones is the second cause i made uh, when i am practicing all these things because uh, in india if there are any uh, some um, rituals they don't like menses to be there as a, they feel that there is obstruction. Then they will take some pills and uh, they will uh, uh, get it ahead of that uh, date. Suppose it is on five, she will adjust it to uh, up to 10. She will do all the rituals and then she will allow the body to mensurate. Then it is not good. Then many mom, uh, girls uh, nowadays I met from, they are college going uh, girls and uh, they feel they are not getting their menses by their own. They has to take, they decide, oh, just now we have finished our exams, then we should have some menses. After six months, seven months, they to get some primalute N or letros and or deviary. And then for five days, one BD or once, uh, twice a week, twice a day. And then after they will wait for two or three days and they will have the withdrawal bleeding. The actual biological clock is disturbed 
and after that the actual monthly cycle is also disturbed so all these are leading to the pcod centrally ob central obesity heavy breast uh, hirsutism they are having more hair on their upper lips then on their chin on their breast and more acne then baldness on their scalp and hoarseness of voice they are having more aggression in their nature testosterone hormone like a uh, men they are increase they are, it is increased in their body and this woman uh, alternate patient is having the problem of pcod nowadays then no exercise is a major reason but exercise should be in a proper way it should not be in a particular way of burning the calories after diet it should not be done it should be done early in the morning when vata uh, is prominent the exercise should be done and it should be more up to yoga because it will balance the hormones in her body it uh, sun salutations are more useful pranayam is useful then nowadays excessive stress i think woman body is not designed for this excessive stress but by uh, god's grace we have the opportunity to learn we learned a lot we took all this opportunity and we are working a lot but uh, due to this excessive stress because she most of the women are having the um, feeling that oh i should do complete all these things like a super woman uh, she has to do the work at home she has to take care of her son uh, child or she has to work on their job and she has to work hard there are especially when i met with the it patient they are stressed very very stressed and this stress proper counseling then this stress uh, gives rise to the irregular menses then uh, uh, infertility so proper counseling shirodhara and uh, yoga nidra and some yoga uh, pranayam also mm-hmm. relieves this excessive stress and after that they get conceived so we have to think and surprisingly it is uh, detailed it is uh, uh, st- uh, described in sushruta acharya it is the major manasobhi tapat is the major cause of delayed conception it is not so said that it is a cause of infertility but conception is delayed due to this excessive stress and nowadays you must be knowing that everyone is having under stress because covid situation is also there uh, it is aggravating the uh, stress then no proper sleep is also a major problem then uh, because many women like to uh, uh, scroll their uh, mobile at night watch uh, amazon video or something like that uh, to watch the tv late night and when they start doing all these things the sleep they cannot sleep in a proper way so then late marriages is also a problem because at that age of 38 or 40 when they uh, plan for the uh, marriage after marriage after one or two years they feel that they should go for the conception and at the age of 42 or 43 the fertility is decreased mm-hmm. so late marriage is also one of the cause of causing the infertility and not taking rest during the menses there there i it is uh, described that uh, there is a uh, complete diet and regimen different diet and regimen is uh, described in granthas that what should rajaswala paricharya be there that is menstruating woman how should she behave what should she eat and it is uh, de- uh, detailed it is uh, given in granthas mm-hmm. and you know it's interesting that you mentioned uh, that in in india women are trying to control their fertility control their menstrual cycle uh, yes. by with using rituals we see yes. the same the very same thing here in the us women oh. trying to control their menses with with exercise with diet um oh. and uh, people you know we just don't realize how important it is to have the menstrual cycle every month for 3 yes. days yes. and to take rest during the menstrual cycle yes. Um, yes. Ath- athletes in the united states will will uh, will not will will not get the proper rest during the menstrual cycle oh. which can really cause a lot of problems yes yes it mm-hmm. is causing the uh, problem of pcod more and more mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. wonderful um could you could you tell us about um the uterbasti treatment and yes what yes that involves 
Yes, Uttar Basti. Yes, I can tell. Is it different than than a daven, uh, than a wash for? Yes, for yes. Dush. It is different from dush. Okay. It is very different. Let me search for the slide. Let, okay. let give, give me a minute. Sure. Uh, in short, we, we we can see what are the uh, what is the lifestyle during the menses. These are the do's and don'ts. Uh, we should one uh, one should do during the because she is having a wound in her uterus at that time, so she should take the rest because whenever there is a wound, we have to protect. She should not get infected to that wound. And when she is Vranita, it is actually described in Granthas, she is having a wound. So her diet should be a light diet. Mm -hmm. Instead, she used to order some food from Alexa or from Zomato, Swiggy, and she ate a lot. She used to eat chocolates to raise her serotonin levels. But this should not be done at the time of menses. Mm -hmm. so, it's also, it's important not to insert anything during menses. So, yes. so sex should be avoided during menses. Yes, yes. Tampons, it would be yes. beneficial to avoid them because the, yes. the flow needs to go downwards and out. Yes, yes. Not, it should not be stopped in any way. You are pointing mm -hmm. towards the important point. Yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. Very perfect. Mm -hmm. Now we will go for the Uttar Basti. Yeah, there's so so many uh, wonderful. Um, there's a lot of wonderful knowledge that that Ayurveda has for yes. for the menstrual cycle. Yes, yes, and it it is. Uh, they are they studied all these things in a detailed manner. Mm -hmm. This is uh, you can see this picture of Uttar Basti, and uh, Uttar Basti. Is we directly insert? Yeah, this is uterus. I, I don't see the picture yet. I only oh, see oh, the, oh. the lifestyle. Let, let, yeah. I think, yes. Thanks. Uh, can you see the? Yes. Yep. Yes. Huh. This is the uh, picture of uterus. These are the fallopian tubes. You can see here fallopian tubes. These are actual ovaries. And we insert a, a cannula directly up to the cervix. This is the picture of Travarta Yoni. We can see, or we can say at it is the uh, uterus. It is a, a cross section of uterus. Mm -hmm. So to understand, we ha I had taken this picture and we are inserting this cannula in a, a up to the cervix external loss. And then we, uh, by the, with the help of syringe, all these are, all this procedure is done with complete uh, disinfectant procedure, like an operation procedure, mm -hmm. all, all the things with oil, everything is disinfected. And then the oil is inserted directly into the womb. It travels to the follow up, through the fallopian tubes and up to the ovaries. It increases the fertility, endometrium receptivity. So before IU and IVF, one can plan for uttarbasti. So it will increase the endometrium receptivity also. If she is having some problem of PCOD, we can give the medicine that will dissolve the fibroids or the cyst over there. If there are some blockages, tubal blockages, for the tubal blockages, Uttarvasti is very, very, very effective. But it is my experience that if it is at the distal end, it is um, fundal end, it, is, it, is, uh, uh, it can be removed earlier. But if it is at the fimbrial end, that is distal end, it is difficult to remove, but it can be removed. When we are having some option, uh, it is, we can have some, do some tuboplasty or some uh, uh, operation, laparoscopic surgery to remove, remove that uh, block. But when some wound heals, it gives some uh, kind of uh, healing adhesions. And so after operation also, this is all these lines are very micro. So when we do operation, within one or two months, she can get conceived. But if the block, we want to block, remove the block permanently, there is the best option is Uttar Basti. Mm -hmm. And it should, it is done from the fifth day up to ninth day for the five days. Because uh, on the fifth day, the cervical os is opened. So we can insert the cannula easily. But at the same time, 
it is this procedure should lot should be done under a uh, expert hand one should know how to do the pv how to palpate all the things and is it ac acutely antiverted or acutely retroverted otherwise there can be complications mm -hmm. it can be fatal so it should be done in a proper way and with proper sterilization this is the beauty of uttarbasti and it is contraindicated in virgins i don't prefer to do all these thing because it will break the hymen then uh, when there is a pro prolapse cervical prolapse is there uterine prolapse is there i, I don't do any mm -hmm. type of infections if uh, uh, of uh, vagina uh, maybe sexual uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases or any vaginitis or uh, cervicitis that is she is having lot of huge uh, uh, wide discharge at that time we can advise her to do the douche or you can perform yoni dhavan that is a, a wash of this vagina mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can do yeah so um um what uh let's see i'm wondering um oh. at that women i'm sure women uh, that are that are interested in a holistic treatment for yes. infertility would like to receive something like this where yes. um How how do they find a qualified practitioner in India? What yeah. do you recommend? Yes, uh, holistic method. These points are there. Ayurvedic medicines, panchakarma, ahar, vihar, and it is all personalized because up to by your constitution, how, where you live, how what are the your body habits, and or considering all these things, one has to take. Uh, we have to give the um, counseling that you should do all these things, kind of yoga. and this is the patcha that is the you should take all these things and you should avoid eating this and this is the holistic method of uh, um, treating the infertile patients uh, please pardon me your, for your question can you please repeat your question yes yes so uh, women that are interested in these uh, these treatments for uh, infertility um, how do they find a qualified uh, vaidya in india and yeah, to, yes. to come and receive first of all they should look authenticity are they bms or md are they studied in an authorized university uh, that is we are having here maharashtra Nash nashik university is their uh, rogi university so that that she should uh, they should uh, think about the, the proper registration number and all these things mm -hmm. that is the legal point then her expertise how how many patients she she had uh, treated the, that you can uh, search about it then there are in india we uh, learn from guru shishya parampara so she she, she is uh, working under whose uh, guidance this guru shishya parampara is more important in india so all these things matter and uh, you should search actually to uh, find the authentic a practitioner mm -hmm. you should do some proper searching online searching we can uh, do it is also available and you can ask about the patients uh, reviews also oh are they uh, satisfied with that uh, practitioner because miss mal practices are also present in india so we should uh, know all these things mm -hmm. i think it's important even in the united states to yeah. um, to ask for Uh, you know where are these uh, where who have you studied with who has yes. the practitioner studied with and this is the um, the guru shishya parampara model of of yes. learning ayurveda where where you are you're studying with a teacher or a guru um, yes so it, it that would be a great question if you're in the united states looking for a practitioner to ask yes. of people who have yes. you studied with um because it's important uh you know that educational level like we said earlier in the United States yes. is all over the place there's there's not a lot of regulation of it yet um yes. so it's important to to find people that have trained with qualified individuals yes uh, the only concern is they should not go in false hands and they should not treat their body wrongly that right. is the concern mm -hmm. What else do you have to share with us, Renuka? Pardon me. What else do you have to share with us? I see this oh. picture of a little baby. Yeah, she is a successful case. I will like to share. 
and her mother is a housewife and she was suffering from repeated abortions habitual abortions oh. and her husband was mr that is medical representative and they visited to us i told you that it is a common common misconception that when she is not having the actually they are feeling that woman body is a fertile machine <laughs> i like i don't like to say this but in india they look to woman body as a fertile machine after one year of marriage there are whispers that if uh, when when will you give the good news yes she is also eager but sometimes it doesn't happen so as a woman one should understand the pressure on her the society is also having some more and more burdening her pressure on her same the thing happened with her and she was conceived immediately but some fantasies are there she want to uh, they both of them want to uh, enjoy their married life so she first uh, baby was aborted while taking empty pills second time she got conception but there was no fetal heartbeats so that was aborted that was mis- miscarriage third time she was again having the conception within 6 months but that was also aborted and there was at that time there was no fetal pole no fetal cardiac activity also and that was aborted when they visited to clinic she was feeling that because conception was not problem but she was having habitual abortions and the fetus development of the fetus was not so good uh, so they visited and they as a mr he was knowing all these assisted reproductive health systems she he visited many doctors but they told that oh she is having the abortions so what should we do so this is the beauty of ayurveda because we gave only Uh, bija sanskar treatment that is a uh, total detoxification after taking her detail uh, his case history it is again a common misconception that each and every uh, person should do all the five karmas it is not like that only she uh, the all the sampraapti was avrodhatmak kapha vikruti was there she was having repeated rhinitis allergic rhinitis uh, so woman was plant for bija shuddhi and uttarbasti one uttarbasti was given that five days one uttarbasti cycle was given and in next month she was conceived but conception was not problem and then after two months when sonography was done uh, the, everything was normal she was relieved because she was ha- having tremendous stress at that time oh what are, what she is going to do this is also going to be aborted or not but after when she saw all the cardiac activity is well and all the things are good they actually felt very good and it is commonly practiced that she should be with hormones no hormone was given no hormone every only thing we gave is masano masiki vruddhi and the garbha sanskar treatment and uh, you can see the results she is very brilliant mm-hmm. and each and every child i gave treatment of garbha sanskar and bija sanskar because su praja is the aim of our clinic that the next generation should be more and more healthy having good resistance and good immunity and in this pandemic situation i studied the young, eldest one is the oldest one is 29 years old and the youngest child is uh, just four days uh, old wow. but none of them is having the this corona infection so importance of good immunity We, with the help of this masano masiki bija sanskar garbha sanskar good we cannot we can f- focus on this good immunity good uh, iq intelligent quotient good eq good emotional quotient and the overall personality are very good and uh, they are grasping more and more things some uh, hereditary problems are there in their uh, hereditary they can can be removed with the help of this bija sanskar and garbha sanskar treatment and we can go further proceed further and uh, this gives more and more satisfaction to me yeah i bet it does <laughs> yeah um you know in the uh in the in the us um uh, a, a lot of there there's a lot of wonderful in, information about this masanu masaka this month by month regimen for yes. the, the pregnant woman um, yes. there there's there's so much uh, wonderful um, substance there that that ayurveda can provide for uh, for women yes. who are, are pregnant 
And, you know, in that, in yes. that first trimester, that is really the, the time when a woman should be getting the rest um, uh, yes, more so than the last trimester. I think we've got it opposite here in the United States. You know, you want to make yeah. sure that, that that baby takes hold during that first trimester. So, so that is the yes. time to, to get proper rest. And um, yes, yeah. After fourth month, I used to give the medicines because I'm saying that they are having good intelligent quotient because I give medicines for development of the brain. And actually, I uh, teach the patient, uh, my clients to how to speak with the baby because after fifth, fifth month they start growing their ear and uh, they can listen and then I uh, because after talking to each other because you can see two animals are uh, standing in front of them uh, each other they don't speak to each other so they not they, the brain is not so developed but after speaking human being is having developed brain due to speaking. It, it may be in any language, your own language, but mother should talk to baby. When she st whenever she started talking, this samwar, we call it in uh, our language, samwar, conversation is very, very important to, for the development of the brain. Mm. So music therapy is also very helpful. Yoga nidra is helpful. And for the normal delivery, different kind of visualization is very helpful. And all this process can be done enjoyable. So these patients never feel any problem with the help with, within their uh, pregnancy. This is enjoyable. This can become enjoyable journey. Many female I've met, they feel that they will lose their form. Then I have to give them examples of our famous uh, actresses. They had not, after giving birth also, they had not lost their form. Mm -hmm. So they can feel that, oh yeah, we can plan for a baby. Mm -hmm. There are many cases and many examples. I, will, I cannot stop myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, we do have, we have one, um, uh, a few comments from um, our audience member. Um, okay. And she's saying that it is, it is so joyful and I can tell you love your work. Um, it oh. is so clear that, that you're Thank so you. happy. Thank and, you. And, yes. And fulfilled with this. It's wonderful. Um, there is also a question about endometriosis. Um, Suzanne is wondering if there are Ayurvedic treatments for endometriosis. Endometriosis. Yes, I have treated endometriosis up to fourth grade. Endometriosis is Vata Vikruti. It is Vata Vikruti because it is leaving its thana, its ashe, uterus, and going outside the uterus. Outside the uterus up to the uh, ovaries also and I did I met one patient he was she was MD gynec only roaring she was having her roaring practice in Pandarpur that is rural area and she was developed she had developed a chocolate cyst with that and she has to aspirate it uh, every time uh, by going to Solapur then we gave Basti because it is a Vatavi Kruti at first I don't give Uttar Basti to her it uh, only Basti that is uh, 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 that uh, and uh, I advise her to do Snehan Svedan and Basti, Anuvasan Basti. After meal, she, uh, I was giving her 60 ml of Anuvasan Basti. Mm -hmm. And that helped her that first she has to, she stopped the um, uh, aspirating that chocolate cyst. Every month she has to travel for that aspiration of chocolate cyst. Then the endometriosis was cured and then she got uh, twins. Oh. Wonderful. Yeah, that, that we can get the results. Yeah. Uh, so this, this basti um, that you're referring to, this is a, essentially it is a, 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 an, an, an enema that has yes. a formulation yes. usually with it, some, some yes. type of medicinal formulation in, in the enema. Medicinal formulation. And uh, yeah. oil as well. And the, the vata dosha um, is, is... Yes. Uh, it is when... the uh, shlok in the grantha that nahi vata drute yoni. So any yoni vyapad or 20 types of uh, woman yoni diseases or vaginal diseases are described and each and every yoni vyapad is a uh, cause of infertility. So different kind of uh, diseases, yoni diseases, vaginal diseases are uh, important and they are all causes of yoni vyapad, uh, mm -hmm. infertility. So 
uh, most of the times this basti will help but we should know understand by uh, that slide we should know her constitution what are the exact problems and then we can advise her mm -hmm. according to her constitution wonderful is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we close uh not so uh, this is one my uh phone mobile number okay you can take if anyone wants they can okay. take a screenshot great and your gmail address is here too and yeah. for anybody in in the united states it's it's easy to contact somebody in india using whatsapp is that yeah. correct we can reach you on whatsapp yeah yeah no okay. problem yeah okay yes great um and um yeah, if, you, if there are questions, please reach out to either of us. We'd be happy to answer them for you. Um, yeah, it's been wonderful. I feel like we could talk for another few hours about these topics. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I also feel that we can yeah. talk more and more about all these things. Yeah, yeah, it would, it would be wonderful to, to, perhaps we can do this again at some time. Yeah, and it's wonderful uh, to speak with you and you are a good practitioner. Thank and you. I pray to Lord Dhanvandari that you should become a good practitioner, good Vaidya. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you. Wonderful to have you here. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And, um, um, and uh, you know, if, uh, please reach out to us with, with questions. We'd be happy to, to answer them. Yes, okay. yes. After that, also, if there are any questions, you can ask. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Good night, okay. everybody. <laughs> Good night.